Welcome back. Let's dive in here talking about pages one through eight of this very first chemistry pace, pace one. Again, there's not a lot I need to explain here. I'm more going to give you a couple of tips to help you prepare to do well on the test coming at the end of the pace. One technique that um, is used in education is called a advanced organizer. And that's a way of visualizing some of the content that's being given in the case of a PACE. It's just a lot of text, okay? Now thankfully they had some things in bold print, but it's helpful to see a diagram of it and kind of organize it from there. I would recommend having a notebook. All right, maybe it's a three ring notebook that you can put loose leaf pages into. Maybe it's a spiral bound. Maybe it's a small notebook, whatever. But take notes as you go through because the act of organizing your material into charts will actually help your brain. So by writing it out using different colored pencils, all right, markers. Um, <clears throat> some students really get into that more than others, but organizing it in a way that makes sense to your brain will help you be able to visualize it better. So let's look here on page two. <clears throat> Third of the way down it says, depending on the type of matter or method of examining the matter, chemistry can be divided into six major categories. Okay? Now if you look at the bold print coming up, we have organic, inorganic, biochemistry, nuclear, physical, and analytical. Analytical. Okay? So we start with chemistry, put that in the middle, and then we can write organic, inorganic, biochemistry, nuclear, we can keep going, right? List the six subcategories and then each of these categories as you read the paragraph you'll find can often be divided into two three four other even sub subcategories so i just took this one of inorganic chemistry and that uh, particular chapter not chapter but paragraph talks about metallurgy and geochemistry as being two types of inorganic chemistry so Try it, okay? Just try it. Make your own chart, use color if you like, and organize your material, and I think that'll help you visualize it and help you uh, do better as you do answer the questions. Study for the checkup. Now, if you go to page four, <coughs> it talks about the um, scientific method. <coughs> Obviously, scientists use the scientific method to try to solve problems. But the scientific method is not just used in science. It's used anytime we encounter a problem and we're trying to figure out why it's not working. I just had a problem at my house just this past week. For some reason, we kept noticing mice in our basement and we saw one in the kitchen. And at that point, my wife said, that's it, we've got to get rid of these mice. Where are they coming from? And uh, so we had a problem. <laughs> So I had a hypothesis of a different methods that we could try to solve the problem. We tried mouse traps. I ended up catching seven mice. That's not good, right? Well, it's good we got rid of seven mice, but like, where are they coming from? Um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna go into all the details. Big story. We tried several different methods and then observed the results over time to see which methods seemed to get rid of the mice, okay? And then we would call that, I would call that, the solution to that problem. Um, every time your dad hears a noise with the car and says, ah, I don't think I've heard that sound before, I wonder what that is. He's gonna start using the scientific method to try different things or the mechanic will try different things to figure out, did that solve it? And uh, what was it? And the more trained they are, the better they're able to make a good estimate or guesstimate of what the problem is. But they're still gonna follow this method. And uh, one step of that method is creating an experiment. Um, <clears throat> but again, an experiment may not be in a science lab, it can just be in life. We use the scientific method a lot. So keep that in mind as you study this. This is real life stuff. One last thing I want to say about the scientific method is, they give you the six steps here. On the checkup and self-test, you just have to number them for the correct order. Okay, or fill in a missing word. But I'm going to warn you, that on the PACE test, they have you write out the six steps by memory. 
Okay, so you are not supposed to be looking at the PACE test. You were supposed to have that pulled out by your supervisor and filed so that you can't see it. Now you can know from the checkups and the self-test that the seven, six steps of the scientific method is something you really need to know, but I'm telling you <clears throat> that the PACE test requires you to know it at a higher level and master it even better than you have to master it to do well in the self-test, okay? So if I know of tips like that, I'll try to pass those on to you. Another reason why you ought to watch these videos all the way through the course is I will look at the test. I won't give you test answers, but I will help you in preparing, okay, to make sure that you, because I think tests ought to be a good reflection, a good um, <clears throat> accurate measurement of what you have been held accountable for as you work through the pace. Hope that makes sense. All right, I'm not going to belabor the point. You've got what you need to know to get through this first section. We'll do some more videos when we get to the math.